9.62% guaranteed return, is that for real? In this video, I'm gonna share why a lot of savvy investors are rushing to buy iBonds, they're selling like hotcakes. I'll give four tips. Number one, what are the key features of iBonds? What's the actual return that you might get if you buy iBonds today? Is it really 9.62%? Number three, I'm gonna share a loophole on how you can buy iBonds more than the $10,000 limit. And finally, I'm gonna share how you can buy iBonds correctly. So let's get right down to it. I bonds are savings bonds that are 100% backed by the federal government. The I stands for inflation and the higher the inflation rate, the higher the rate that I bonds are going to give us. Well, inflation has been surging as we all know for the past several months. It hit 8.5% back in March, well above the 1 or 2% that we've been used to. The maximum amount that you can buy in I bonds is $10,000 per person per calendar year, although I'll share in a little bit a loophole on how you can go around that. You do need to know that when you buy I bonds, your money is locked in for a year. You can't take it out for the next 12 months. Think of it as a high yield CD. Tip number two, what exactly is the interest rate on I bonds? The rate on I bonds is composed of two rates. The first one is the fixed rate, which is currently 0% and has been that way for a really long time. So we don't really care about that. The next one is the variable inflation rate, which resets every May and November. So if you go to the Series I savings bond website at treasurydirect.gov, it's going to say 9.62%. Did you just say 9.62%? Yes, I said 9.62%. That's because inflation has been skyrocketing for the last six months. Now, before you go on an I bond shopping spree, Let's wait and read the fine print because if you withdraw your I bonds before five years, you're gonna forfeit three months worth of interest. So how will that affect your return? So let's talk about two scenarios. So let's say inflation stays high and I bonds continue to give 9.62% interest rate and you cash out after 12 months because you're gonna forfeit three months worth of interest rate after you do the math it drops to around 7.21%. Now, inflation will probably not stay high. In fact, a lot of analysts are saying that inflation has already peaked. So the more likely scenario, scenario number two, is inflation drops when I-bonds rate resets in November. So let's say it drops to 6%. Now, after you do the math, 9.62% for six months and then 6% for the next six months, your net interest rate drops to 5.85%, still not bad for a 100% federally backed investment. In this third tip, I'm gonna share a loophole on how you can buy I bonds above the $10,000 limit. Now remember, you can only buy up to $10,000 per person per calendar year. If you want to buy more than that, you can think about a combination of these three things. One, you can buy $10,000 worth of I bonds for your spouse or your partner. You probably already thought about that. The next one is if you have a child, you can buy I bonds for your child. You just have to create a separate treasury direct account for your child and link it to your personal treasury direct account. Now, here comes the main loophole. You can buy an unlimited number of I bonds as a gift. So what do I mean by that? Even though you and your spouse has already purchased $10,000 each of I bonds this year, you can technically buy 10 or 20 or $30,000 worth of I bonds for your spouse as a gift. And your spouse can do the same for you. Keep in mind though, that once the I bonds are given as a gift, it will count towards the annual limit of the recipient. So if your spouse already bought $10,000 of I bonds this year, he or she cannot accept your I bonds gift this year. It'll have to wait until the year when he or she is not purchasing I bonds. The main risk of this loophole is if the I bonds rate has fallen in 2024 or beyond, you're gonna be stuck at a lower I bonds rate. 
Fourth and last tip, how can you buy I-bonds correctly? There's only one place where you can buy I-bonds and that's through treasurydirect.gov. The steps are pretty straightforward. However, some people encounter a snag where they're asked to fill out a form 5444, which is kind of a pain to complete. And it appears that this form is only required if your submission cannot be validated online or you are randomly selected to complete it. Now to increase your chances of not being asked to fill out this form 5444, you can do these three things. First, type in your driver's license information even though it's not required. Second, make sure that the name you're using matches the name that you're using in your tax return. And finally, comb through your information really carefully to make sure they're accurate before clicking submit. Now, after you've opened a treasurydirect.gov account, log back in and go to buy direct and look for series I savings bonds.